I might have to grab a cheap pair at the gas station, dude. This is ridiculous. Yeah, dude. Well, let me get back. I'll see you when you get there. Yeah, man. Top of the morning, friends and family. Welcome to Freedom Breeder Friday. I often drive on this road, and for some reason there are a bunch of cars today. I'm now on the straightaway. There's lots of curves, but then eventually you get to this spot where the road just opens up. And I pulled over to get the camera set up here. And right where I pulled over, there's this crazy looking wrecked semi. I don't know what happened here. I mean, it looks like it it wasn't a crash because it pulled over like it caught on fire coming down the grade or something. I, I hope the person was able to get out of that driver's seat before it went up in flames like that. That would be awesome. I'm, I'm guessing they did the way it's pulled over on the side of the road there, but I always see something crazy like that on this road. I, I did some work on a guy's house. He worked for the Kern County Fire Department and he said on this road there's just always fatalities on this road. So it's, you know, important to be careful when you're driving of course even with it's this long straightaway here so it's like I set up the camera because when I'm driving I have time to think it's my thinking time and I always have all these ideas in my head and of course now this time that I've set up the camera and have it all rigged up ready to go I my mind is blank and I have nothing of any real importance to say to you guys other than I'm headed to Freedom Breeder and I figure I'll show you five of my favorite Freedom Breeder snakes today too. Jesse's always doing that on the Freedom Breeder channel. I don't really do that all that often. And you guys want to see snakes. If you want to skip ahead all this blah, blah, blah I'm doing, go to this timestamp right here. I don't mind. You can just check out the snakes if that's all you're here for. I can, I can accommodate you there. I might have something of great importance to say somewhere between here and there. And if, <laughs> if something comes to mind, which it usually does, I don't know what, I don't know why. Every time it's like I got all these great ideas and deep thoughts and I, I get the camera set up and it's like, they're gone. You know what I think it is? It's because I forgot my sunglasses, which is something I almost always remember. And it was nice and foggy when I left the house, but now it's like bright sun out here and I think there's too much input here for me to have any substantial output here. I'm pretty sure that's what's happening right now. Officially the most expensive pair of cheap gas station sunglasses I have ever purchased in my entire life. I'm going to give away these sunglasses to one of you guys that got a perfectly good pair at home. Leave a comment down below about the subject that I'm about to talk about and my favorite comment on the subject I'm about to talk about. I'm going to pick you and I'm going to send you these sunglasses. I'm even going to leave a little tag on there still so you can have them virtually brand new. They're not even polarized. They had no options for polarized and they're still expensive. Anyway, now that I've got my magic glasses on, I'm able to focus on a subject. My universal mind is pulling from the universe and able to focus down to one thing that still relates to all other subjects in the universe. Something I'm still working on a lot. So I've been criticized for taking the easy way out when it comes to controversial topics, especially like when I uploaded that spider video, my thoughts on the spider gene video, I was very middle of the road. And I would go as far as to say that yes, I am extremely neutral in, on almost every subject. The reason being, I'm very empathetic to the ideas on either polar end of the spectrum. Because I think there are good ideas at either end of any given topic, positives and negatives to be had from both. And I can see the good in both sides. I can argue the good or bad for either side of any given topic. The topic we're going to talk about right now is the idea of socializing snakes or not. The extreme on one side being virtually no interaction with the snakes that you keep, only interacting with them in the moment that you need to clean their enclosure, and then putting, back, putting them back, and no extracurricular handling, just leaving that animal be with the exception of the need to move them to clean. There are positives and negatives to this. The positive is the amount of stress you're causing that animal is likely minimal because you're basically leaving them alone for the most part. The negative would be in the case of that pied retic where she was never socialized and now it's very difficult even just to move her just for cleaning because she's so afraid of people. The other end of that idea is the idea of constant handling. Taking your animals out to Walmart would be the extreme opposite of that. Obviously that has negatives. You're, you're stressing the animal out a lot bringing it out to places that it doesn't necessarily need to be and where people don't necessarily need to see it. 
the positive is you do have an animal that is extremely socialized and used to being around and outside with people. And that's very good for educational purposes when you're bringing them to shows and the animal is fairly at ease and has maybe gotten less sensitive to the stress that's being caused by having it out and handling it. And it's something they can deal with more being more domesticated in, in so many words. Now being the extreme neutralist that I am, I tend to practice both of those. Luckily I keep enough snakes where for the most part I can leave them alone, not stress them out too much, but I do take them out for extracurricular activity and handling just for the sake of handling. And I'm able to cycle through the snakes so that one snake isn't getting handled more than any other necessarily, though I do have a couple favorites. And the end result is snakes that aren't always being stressed out by being handled just for fun, but also snakes that are not so unsocialized that they're extremely defensive every time they're being handled and you need to be very careful with them as far as getting bit for, for defensive purposes. Now these are kind of my simple and summarized ideas on this topic. And I think I'd like to explore all topics eventually in this way, talking about the extremes on either side and, and where the middle ground kind of is, which is where I tend to reside based on just the way I view the world in general. Looking forward to doing the podcast that we're gonna be doing with my buddy Garrett. We can have these long form discussions where I can really get these ideas out there and. and because many of these ideas are much more complex than, than a simple quick video you can watch. It's something that is a long discussion, I think, from, in most cases. So it's something that will be happening soon. I hope you guys are excited to see it. I know we mentioned it back at Tinley, the idea that it's happening. It's slowly forming. Garrett's working on a logo based on some ideas that I'm sending him, pictures of me bending over looking for snakes under rocks and other fun stuff like that. But Go ahead and leave that comment down below and let me know where you reside on the spectrum of non-handling versus lots of handling and my snakes love me and why you reside there. Or do you move around like me? I'd like to know your thoughts. Uh, again, I'm gonna take my favorite comment and I'm gonna send you these sunglasses. So looking forward to reading them. If you skipped this part of the video, you just missed an awesome giveaway we're doing for these, these sunglasses. We're giving away these sunglasses right here and you might want to skip back, figure out what you missed. But don't worry, even if you don't do this, we're still giving away some other stuff. There's more giveaways going forward. This is a video full of giveaway opportunities, but as I promised, here are my five favorite snakes here in the Freedom Breeder facility, which is something that changes every time I come. So it's just my favorite this week. Stop laughing at me, Jimmy. I can, I can smell you laughing. This is, a, this is a GHI Mojave Pied. And I just, for some reason, the, the stark contrast between the white, like look at how white that white is, and the little splotch on the tail. I just thought, I just thought. I've been doing a lot of thinking recently. Jimmy just got peed on. <laughs> it got the rodent, and then I saw like a golden shower come at me. He squeezed the piss out of me like that. Here we got a spot nose clown. The thing that really stands out to me about the spot nose clowns is, well, this head stamp, the extreme contrast and the pattern. And then look at this thing over here. Oh, don't worry, I've got my lav mic on, so I don't have to hear you fools back there making all kinds of noise. <laughs> this thing's awesome right here. I don't know why these guys can't just let me film a video without messing with me. What are you doing? No, 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 no. <laughs> Get out of here. So this this stuff going on right here where the alien head comes up and joins, you know, it's not alien heads. I call any anything along the side of the snake that somewhat resembles what the alien heads are. I always call it an alien head just because, just to give it one in name. Even if it doesn't look anything like an alien head, I still refer to it as the alien head because, you know, I, I make things up all the time. So this is a Super Stripe Pastel Hidden Gene Woma Coral Glow. And my cousin was getting into the idea of potentially breeding ball pythons at one point. He said he would really like to try and make something that was like white on the top and had the yellow coming up the sides. And this is like the closest thing I've seen to something that actually does that. Because usually the white comes up from the sides, right? To getting the white on top is a little more of a challenge. Now this isn't exactly, I think, what he was imagining, but it's pretty close with that white dorsal thing going on down the top and then all the other stuff coming up on the sides. I just thought that was really, really different and really cool. And something that I thought you guys would enjoy to see as well. That's something that helps me make a decision on what my favorite is, is what is, what is everybody gonna like? What looks different? What looks amazing? And this, this is it. This is it right here. I can't, I can't, I can't deal with you guys. At least I remembered to hit record. 
All right, before I can go show you the other two that are my favorite, they're in the other room, I'll tell you a little bit about the giveaway. All right, the giveaways are somewhat complicated, so pay close attention here. I did a giveaway on a live stream the other day, last week or whatever, where I was giving away a small sample size of the cocoa blocks and my buddy Justin from the Family Jewels channel won it and he wants to give it back to you guys. And then this cool guy right here, Mr. Johnson, is gonna throw in a big block as well on top of it. So all you gotta do is go over to Justin's channel. He's got a new video going up right now and he's got some secret snake deal happening with my other buddy, Mr. Hartle over at Reach Out Reptiles. Too many people involved in this video that aren't actually in it. It's okay. Go over to Justin's channel, subscribe, comment on his most recent video about what you think the secret snakes he's getting from Garrett are, and that will put you in the running to get the block that he won on the stream and also get this block right here that Jesse's gonna give you. Speaking of Jesse, if you haven't subscribed to the Freedom Breeder channel, there's a link in the description for that as well. You can go over there and check out some of his favorite snakes that he's picked out here and see who has better taste. So this thing right here is pretty tough to beat in my opinion. It's a clown with a new gene going on and yellow belly and uh, he might open up a little, little bit here for you to see. I've probably showed this snake before. Actually, I guarantee I've shown this snake before because this one just, just the cleanliness of the, the pattern and the alien heads and the contrast and the, the niceness coming up the size and this kind of red hue going on. It just has everything going for it that a ball python pattern really can do for a person, I think. And there he is, little ploppy, ploppy, ploppy McPlopperton. Oh, yeah, you know, if I, if I didn't have any morals, I'd probably steal this snake and just like I don't know what happened to it. Sai, 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 what what happened to this snake? Where did it go? What snake? <laughs> he said he said what snake? Good boy. Okay, so there's that there's that bad boy, and here comes the final bad boy. I mean I'm somewhat biased because I I did produce this snake, and she sunset. I think that working and she into the sunset project was definitely a good idea because. It really helps enhance the oranges and reds that the sunset offers. And if you work it into some combos, it's just gonna be, I mean, it's gonna be a good thing, I think. I'm just really, I like it. I like it a lot. That's why when I first laid eyes on it, I was like, I gotta do whatever I possibly can do to get into this project. And after selling several of my souls, I, I got into it and now I'm a soulless wanderer of the earth, but I'm in an awesome project of snakes. So it's, was it worth it? Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Yeah, I'm gonna let you have these back. I hope you guys enjoyed the little journey down here to Freedom Breeder, up here to Freedom Breeder, around here to Freedom Breeder. Go ahead and uh, go down in the comments and just leave a random comment that says anything at all. I, just so I can go back and read it later and be like, what was that person thinking? Oh yeah, I told them to say that. That's right, that's right. Don't forget to go do what you got to do to get in on a potential giveaway here. And also don't forget about the giveaway I'm doing myself, where if you go get a Triple B t-shirt or some kind of apparel, wear it out in public, wear it to a show, you'll enter into a contest that we're giving away a snake, the snake that I will announce in a future video. And it'll be given away just after the October Tinley show coming up this year. So you got plenty of time to get in on it, but don't sleep. We're going to take a quick look here at the snake that didn't make it out of that clutch. So... Fair warning, you don't want to see a dead snake. Skip ahead to this timestamp right here. 